Welcome to Nandadeep Eye Hospital. It is a place where we try to share what we have learned over the years to the generation next. In this video, I want to share a case uh, where there was a subconjunctal hemorrhage and what you will do in such situation, I want to learn from you. I'm doing a regular case on topical anesthesia there and I'm using my regular 2.8 mm blade. I found that blade might be a little blunt here and patient was also not fixing properly towards light. So I changed my blade and I'm now using limbs forceps to hold the eye. I'm trying to hold the eye near the limbus. But as you can see that probably the limbs forceps which has sharp teeth pierced through the conjunctiva and punctured a subconjunctival blood vessel. Usually in such situations you find slight bleed around that area and then it stops. So I continue my procedure. I'm more focused on the cataract removal there while the subconjunctal bleed keeps increasing. So here, because my focus was not on the subconjunctal hemorrhage, which was increasing, I continued with the procedure. And you can see that the blood keeps seeping under the subconjunctal space, which is a potential space and it's getting bigger and bigger already you can see the clot is getting formed there so at the end of the procedure you can see that uh, there is a subconjunctal clot which has formed already now how will you prevent this and how will you manage this so intraoperatively, I should have used probably a traumatic forceps and uh, if there is subconscious hemorrhage, pressure using cotton bud or any blunt instrument over the bleeding point might have stopped it further. Topical phenylephrine, use of cautery also can be done in case of significant bleed and control blood pressure of the patient. But most often the subconjunctal bleed is not so problematic. So we tend to continue with the surgery. Postoperatively, I think it is important to reassure the patient that this is not a significant problem. Explain the possibility that it may still spread because the hematoma, as it dissolves, it might spread a bit more. And also there might be color changes and finally there will be absorption. For soothing effect, we might prescribe lubricating drops and vitamin C can be prescribed so that the fragility of vessels is reduced. What are your inputs? What would you like to do differently? Do write in the comments. Thank you.